Welcome to this tutorial on model-based design for quadcopter autopilot. From concept to prototype. Here is the outline of this tutorial. In this tutorial, we will focus on modeling virtual sensors, including inertial sensors such as GPS, IMU, and INS, as well as perception sensors like LiDAR, cameras, and ultrasonic sensors. In this session, we will explore the sensor block in Simulink. We'll begin by modeling inertial sensors, then move on to perception sensors. We'll start by building a GPS model that outputs position, velocity, and course information. The GPS, or Global Positioning System, is a satellite-based navigation system that provides geolocation and time information anywhere on Earth. A GPS receiver determines its position by calculating the time it takes for signals from multiple satellites to reach it. By using signals from at least four satellites, it can estimate 3D position, latitude, longitude, and altitude, as well as velocity and course over ground. In Simulink, we can model a virtual GPS sensor to simulate this behavior by generating position, velocity, and course outputs based on the motion of a vehicle in a simulated environment. This allows us to test navigation algorithms and sensor fusion techniques without the need for real-world data collection. Let's take a look at the simulation results. Using the Simulation Data Inspector in Simulink, we can easily visualize the GPS model's outputs including position, velocity, and course, compared to the ground truth from the flight dynamics model outputs. Next, let's move on to modeling the IMU, or Inertial Measurement Unit. The IMU sensor measures a body's specific force, angular rate, and sometimes magnetic field. It typically integrates accelerometers, gyroscopes, and optionally magnetometers to estimate motion and orientation. The MM's IMU, or Microelectromechanical Systems Inertial Measurement Unit, is a compact, low-cost variant commonly used in drones. It combines microscale accelerometers and gyroscopes, sometimes magnetometers, fabricated through micromachining techniques. MEMS IMUs are lightweight and energy efficient, making them ideal for embedded systems, though they generally have higher noise and drift compared to high-performance IMUs. In Simulink, we can model an IMU to simulate acceleration, angular velocity, and magnetic field outputs based on the motion of a vehicle. The IMU model can also include its typical characteristics like sensor noise, bias, and drift, enabling realistic testing of navigation, estimation, and sensor fusion algorithms. Here are the simulation results, which visualize the outputs of the IMU model, including accelerometer, gyroscope, and magnetometer measurements, compared to the ground truth from the flight dynamics model outputs. Next, let's move on to modeling the inertial navigation system INS, where we'll integrate the IMU measurements to estimate position, velocity, and orientation over time. The inertial navigation system, INS, integrates data from the IMU, accelerometers, gyroscopes, and magnetometers to estimate the vehicle's position, velocity, and orientation. The INS typically uses GPS data as well to correct for drift and improve the accuracy of the position estimates. In Simulink, the INS model outputs noise-corrupted position, velocity, and orientation based on the corresponding inputs. To adjust the level of noise in the outputs, you can modify the accuracies of roll, pitch, yaw, position, velocity, acceleration, and angular velocity. 
The accuracy is defined as the standard deviation of the noise. Here are the simulation results, including position, velocity, Euler angles, acceleration, and angular velocity, compared to the ground truth from the flight dynamics model outputs. Next, let's transition to modeling the perception sensors. We will begin by modeling the LiDAR, fisheye camera, ideal camera, and depth camera. In Simulink, the LiDAR model generates a point cloud object, which represent the 3D structure of the environment by measuring distances to objects using laser pulses. Simulink allows you to model the sensor's characteristics, such as range, field of view, angular resolution, and scan rate. You can also introduce noise into the LiDAR data to reflect real-world imperfections. Here are the simulation results from the LiDAR sensor. We use the Point Cloud Viewer to visualize and inspect large 3D point clouds. You can interact with the point clouds and adjust camera and viewer properties for better inspection. Let's move on to the fisheye camera model. In Simulink, the fisheye camera model simulates the wide field of view characteristic of fisheye lenses, which capture a hemispherical or near-hemispherical view with a field of view of up to 195 degrees. The model incorporates factors such as lens distortion, projection methods, and resolution to accurately represent the camera's behavior. Here are the simulation results from the fisheye camera. Similarly, Simulink also offers the ideal camera model, which simulates key parameters such as focal length, optical center, resolution, and lens distortions. Here are the simulation results from the ideal camera. Next, we'll move on to the depth camera. The depth information is derived from the ideal camera we discussed earlier, and then scaled to a range of 0 to 1 for visualization. Here are the simulation results from the depth camera. Here are the overall simulation results. Incorporating the Simulink model, the Simulation 3D window, Fisheye Camera Viewer, Ideal Camera Viewer, Depth Camera Viewer, and LiDAR Point Cloud Viewer. Last but not least, let's explore the ultrasonic sensor. 
An ultrasonic sensor measures distance by emitting high-frequency sound waves and then detecting the time it takes for the sound waves to bounce back after hitting an object. This process is known as echolocation. The sensor has a transmitter that emits the sound waves and a receiver that captures the reflected waves. In Simulink, the ultrasonic sensor model simulates the behavior of a real-world ultrasonic sensor by calculating the distance between the sensor and nearby objects using ray casting techniques in a three-dimensional environment. It mimics how an actual sensor emits ultrasonic pulses and detects reflections to estimate range. Here are the simulation results from the ultrasonic sensor model, which is oriented downward on the drone. All right, we've now covered the sensor models for GPS, IMU, INS, LiDAR, fisheye camera, ideal camera, depth camera, and ultrasonic sensor. Additionally, Simulink offers a wide range of other sensor models, including radar, as well as those provided by the Navigation Toolbox and the Sensor Fusion and Tracking Toolbox. All right, let's wrap up this session. We've explored how to model various virtual sensors in Simulink including GPS, IMU, INS, LiDAR, fisheye camera, ideal camera, depth camera, and ultrasonic sensor. I hope this session has given you a clear understanding of how these sensor models enhance the realism and capability of a quadcopter simulation. In the next session, we will focus on flight control law design. I look forward to your participation.